time ago we uh, had an assembly with Science for Democracy, eHumans and uh, European Alternatives uh, about health and more specifically about the end of life decision together. My first question is going to be very straightforward. Um, why specifically the topic of end of life decision? Because it represents something that relates to everyone. So all of us have to deal with our relationship with the moment of death. Uh, and also because uh, it's uh, a space where the, the role of states and regulations uh, can really impact the well-being of people. So health, of course, is a broad uh, topic that technically is not under the competencies of the European Union. Um, so starting to, to bring this topic at EU level is quite important. Um, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, gave all of us an understanding of how uh, having the European Union involved uh, when it comes to health matters kind of speed up the process of considering health as part of those matters that should be more under the competence of the European Union. When we talk about the end of life decision, how can we act at EU political level knowing that health is not an EU competency? There are multiple um, charters, regulations, documents that already paved the way for a progressive uh, evolution of policies in this space. Um, first of all, we can refer to the Charter of Fundamental Rights, which specifically refers to the right to life on one side, but also the right to self-determination. Directive uh, of the European Union on the application of patients' rights uh, in cross-border healthcare. Because also we, we shouldn't forget that as European citizens we can move across member states. And the fact that uh, one national legislation is not the same in all member states somehow forces us to think about discrimination, about the civil rights that European citizens have in different member states. If I have the means, the economical means, I can consider to go into another member state to access that type of public service, whilst if I don't have that economical means, I'm stuck. And when we talk about this topic, it might literally mean being stuck in bed if we think about people with uh, sclerosis lateral amyotrophica or other diseases that somehow hold people blocks in their own bodies. So it's really a, a matter of the freedom of movement within the European Union uh, and access to public health, uh, inequalities in the different health systems. So looking at this from a European perspective somehow gives us a framework of the existing documents and regulations and directives, but on the other side, force us that are active in trying to reform European Union policies to try to look a bit forward of the existing and try to imagine new uh, venues of activation of European citizenship rights. How do you think that having citizens assemblies on matters that are related to health, end of life decision, can hopefully help moving the topic forward and breaking that wall that we're hitting when we talk about health matters at EU level. I think it's very evident in civil rights, particularly at the national level, that uh, you have a dynamic where no one wants to make the decision within the parliament because of electoral consensus. Mechanisms like citizen assemblies are a great way to unlock that debate to bring it out of the electoral competition where it risks to get stuck and to open the way for important reforms. Um, I think we have some very good examples in the past of the use of citizen assemblies. For example, in Ireland, the old reforms around abortion right and uh, egalitarian marriage were favoured by the fact that there were a process of deliberative citizen assemblies. In a collective way, this can become a shared ground for better regulations, better laws, better directives for the member states, and it can favour a European Union that is not only based on the uh, economical uh, elements or the classic freedom of movement, we can push it a bit further and civil rights can be something that is part of the values uh, of the European Union itself. <laughs>